Hello everyone. So this is the second part of the script device demonstration. So this is the devices that you have here presented as something out of a box presented in Motion Builder. And in the first part, I already described what is it. So it's basically a device that could help to run Python code and runtime um, in order to do some custom logic. And the interesting demonstration that I that I share it is that the Tetris game that you can play inside the Motion Builder and no scripts additional, no external plugins are used for that. So in this second part of the video, it's not going to be a quick video. So I will try um, from scratch uh, to create a custom logic. And in the teaser, I already show what it, it will be. Because I was thinking like what, what I can show, what, what it could be an example. And I thought it would be nice if I just scatter some boxes around in the scene. Let it be 100 or so boxes. And then we will do a simulation that we have some uh, the, the main uh, control box, which will have a magnetic impact on other cubes uh, boxes in the scene. And we will do kind of very sim simple uh, this physics simulation over the boxes presented in the scene. Yeah, um, so this at least could be an interesting showcase. What is the advantage of using Python script device compared to relation constraint? Because when we have a tons of objects and we need to control especially similar logic on the tons of objects like a crowd or a swarm. So in that case, using a script device has some advantages on that. And in terms of initialization that we don't need to create um, a bunch of this input and output animation nodes when we load a scene. And also in terms of evaluation that it will not take the evaluation speed. Uh, it will not take a time of evaluation threads. So we still have all this time for our characters, for our scene. We can do a lot of stuff. So yeah, I think that could be an interesting example and let's try. Um, I couldn't say that it will be a quick video, as I mentioned before, because I will try to create the scripts right now from scratch. So I already experimented with that, but I will try to write it just right now and see how it goes. So it's not a full format of the stream. Uh, it's kind of pre-recorded stream, but anyway, I will record it just, uh, yeah, in real time in one pass. So hopefully it will go uh, smooth. Um, so yeah, let's try and start with the first script, which is supposed to be what we have to do in the scene. The, our main cube will be just a cube. And then uh, let's make something um, like a scatter, right? So let's make it something like a scatter. <coughs> and um, we import all, so that will be simple scripts without any optimizations. So please don't do it like this on production level. It's better to import only um, uh, yeah, declarations that you actually need. But for this prototyping, I'm doing like import everything from the PuerB SDK library. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so FB get model selected. So we go into um, get the models where our models will be model list. Oh, so we have, if I press uh, control space, we have some hints for the declaration. So we get the models and if the len of our models is greater than zero, let's print uh, the first model name. So at least if we run the script, we need to save it. So let's save it as the script um, uh, scatter. That was my experiment. So that will be scatter two. Hopefully it will not be worse than scatter that I shown on the teaser. Um, yeah, so the name return here is the cube. That's basically what we need. So let's move forward with that. And let's say that instead of printing a name, what we want to do, we want to do a scatter with the, some 
elements here. So let's define function which will do this scatter. And here we need a model and we also want to know how many columns and how many rows we want to scatter around. So we just say in range num calls uh, columns for j in range num rows we do a single scatter from the model yeah so now we need to make this method that will do just one cube clone in the column i and row j so we do the single scatter with our model and i and j or even we can call it n column and row for these variables and we say that um, so in motion builder you can do a copy and duplicate your model um, if you call it like model copy like this uh, no, sorry, not a model copy. We, if we make it, uh, it's called a clone. Do we have a I no clone like this? And actually, when I'm writing code, um, when I'm writing a code, I'm usually um, motion builder is decay help. Um, in my case, it's 2019 because that's what I'm using. So I'm searching for this help and then I have something around. So if I have a question, I can type up the model search. And then there will be like a Python member list to, to remind quickly uh, what methods we have. And this is the function, the member function presented, which is clone clone the model and this will duplicate the current model. Yeah, that's what we need and it will return a newly created model. So this will be our new model. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so now we need to specify the offset for that. Um, uh, so the offset for this, uh, it should be that it will take the, the source model that I'm going to scatter. <clears throat> Uh, translation property and translation property value stored in the member called data and then we need to make our offset of the schedule so our offset let's make a variable kind of constant that our offset will be 10 let's say right so the offset and i want to scatter them in the okay let's put it on the ground make it maybe a little bit bigger so i want to make it in the x and z so not scatter in the height but only on the ground plane along the ground plane so in that case i need only x and z um, axes so let's go to the local axis x and z yeah so that i will put it uh, it will be my offset multiply my current index of the column zero for the height and then offset multiply by the index of the row and then the new model uh, translation we assign value of this v variable right and that seems to be what i actually need um, so let's run the code okay there is a syntax view where is it and the scatter okay it's here syntax here. so let's run again okay so we have our cube but there is no any other cubes. Oh, sorry, because I didn't call the scatter. <laughs> okay, so we want to scatter our first selected model and have the scatter 10 by 10. Let's do the scatter. Okay, this is it. Um, but this one looks a little bit super well organized. Let's make it a bit more realistic, let's say. 
a bit more natural. So let's put some noise in where we position these cubes. And also what will be super cool to do is to a little bit rotate them like this. So we will have some variety and they will not look very formalized. So to make it a little bit more natural. So I'm going to remove my 100 cubes to run the code again. Uh, actually, when I'm dragging the Python editor, I'm holding control to avoid this um, uh, dock in the window, which is very annoying, or it, I should just uh, turn off this docking at all. Anyway, um, so what we're going to do here is we can import the um, uh, random model. And in case of offset, let's define the... Um, tuple so it will be not 10 but let's define what is the minimum and maximum value that we want to randomize between these two um, so that will be for example 9.3 and 10.8 so that then instead of using the constant offset we should do random and call in this model there is the Call, uh, there's the method which is called uniform and we should call here the minimum and maximum just call the range and do the same thing basically here one more randomization yes so let's have a look how it works now yeah that works much better. So we have some kind of randomization. Let's just add the rotation to that. Let's remove this again. <clears throat> and add a little bit of rotation. So the offset for rotation will be in range, let's say 25 degrees and 83 just a random value so there is nothing about this values actually so for the rotation um, for the model when we get access to the rotation uh, property animatable property this property is in Euler angles so we need to assign the value as the vector 3d and i want to rotate just around the y-axis so to rotate only in this axis for this randomization so it will be very similar rigid simulation not uh, like when i will do this magnetic i'm not planning to do any kind of rotation it will only be updating position probably because otherwise we need to go much further with uh, uh, doing more features for this simulation so for now we'll be quite uh, simple case uh, random uniform and then we will put this offset rotation 0 to offset rotation 1 and then 0 here and this is our new rotation that we're going to have right I think that's it for this script um, basically we have this target cube we we can run a script and we have our randomized cubes that looks cool so what i also would like to do here is to have our cube a specific material so that will be beginning of our scene so i'm going to shading elements and add a material here and uh, yeah just put some diffuse red color so that will be the cube that will take control and just to show that okay this is something uh, different so yeah this is the first part not like another part of the video but this is the first chopper we say so we finish with that we have these cubes that will be used for our simulation so this is our source data now let's start with another script so now to do the actual simulation so when it comes to the um, uh, script device, if I put it into the scene, we see that there is a Python script code that will be evaluated. Every, every frame, every tick, uh, you see it's uh, 30 samples per second. 
So it will be evaluated in the idle thread 30 frames uh, per second, 30 times, right? So um, before I put some script here, and yeah, important to note that this script will be evaluated in the context, on the main Python context we have. But if, before I go to the script, I like to experiment a little bit here in the Python editor to find some algorithm and logic that works because I can just uh, manually press several times, or press F5 to, to have some iterations of the script and see that how it goes. And if everything is fine, I put it here because um, it's not convenient to write any code here, or you can use external file probably, but I'm doing everything inside Motion Builder, not using any external, at least for now, I'm not using Sublime uh, or any other environment. So uh, let's start with the simulation logic right now. So this is the second script, which will be our simulation logic. So before it was a scatter uh, tool, now it's a simulation. And we start with the same uh, from Python and BSDK import. So this is our beginning, uh, which is uh, great. And what we have to do actually, so we have a cube that we need to know about. Um, yeah, uh, probably like what I personally do, I'm taking some notes like on a paper, I'm trying to also um, uh, have some iterations of the algorithm, what I'm doing. I will not show it here right now, um, but the, let's a little bit talk about this. So this idea for the simulation is we know that the cube will be moved by the user, by me, so I will move it. And we could store as the variable here, we can make a user variable. Um, something like um, uh, previous position, for example. So let's make a variable custom um, vector have to be, and we call it previous position. So when we store previous position, like an every evaluation tick, we have a current position and the previous evaluation position. So from this change, when we move our cube, we could know the acceleration. And this acceleration, uh, so when we know the position on every cube and with knowledge of acceleration, we could uh, make this magnetic impact, magnetic simulation, like push every cube and increase the velocity in the direction of my cube in case my cube is close to some of these cubes. So that will be the idea of this magnetic simulation. So when I move my cube and some cubes, are close, clo uh, they are close enough, they will receive this um, acceleration impact and will have a change of velocity. And in our rigid simulation, we will use this velocity to update a position. And basically that's it. And also for every simulation, when we evaluate, we should uh, compute everything in our delta time. The simplest way to compute a delta time is to define this as a constant because we expect that it will be evaluated 30 frames per second. On practice, it's not always um, 30 frames per second, but for now, we could say that's 30 frames per second evaluation rate for our simulation, right? So it's kind of hard, hard coded rate, uh, which is stable for Euler uh, simulation. And I think it's good to align for this constant evaluation rate. Um, that will make the algorithm and simulation more stable. <clears throat> but that needs some sub steps in case you're um, you have not enough number of samples per second or not enough time. So you need also to have a custom logic to deal with the real delta time based maybe on your system timer or something passed from the relation constraint. We will not do the steps right now. We will think that, okay, it's a static. I think it's a question for, for another discussion or another video. But for now, it's 30 frames per second. And we need to grab our cube. 
which is going to be uh, we can call it maybe that's a hero cube so that will be our main hero that will affect all other cubes and we will find this model by label name and the label name for this is very simple it's a just a cube so what we also need to do with this um, hero cube we need to know the current pose right and the current pose we could know by getting the global position so not i will not access by the translation property i will do it in a way of the current position will be vector 3d and then i will say that uh, arrow cube it has the member function called get vector and i will pass current post so the current global position of the cube will be returned into my current pose variable and then we also need to get access to some previous pose <coughs> that i store in variable uh, yeah so in that case to store velocity on every cube to know uh, this value for the simulation and also to store the previous position i will use the properties so it's very convenient way to store some intermediate values and get quick access to them um, yeah for your logic so um, we need to look into the property that's called prev pose right so property list property list is the um, uh, the container for all the properties and we need to find the property called previous pose and there are two scenarios here <clears throat> so one scenario is that this property is found we know this prop but in case it's not found if prop is none uh, we could also because we, we also need for every cube to uh, to have a property velocity be available so we need a code how to make a new property and for these custom, uh, like for these small actions, uh, small uh, tricks with the script, um, it's quite convenient if you get into some examples of basic operations, let's say. So there is a code uh, script called custom property. So if I put it here, you can see that this is an example of how you can create a custom property, an imitable property, uh, with the desired type. In our case, previous position will be vector three. So we need to pass um, property type as this one vector three. The, the name of the property type is a vector. And then it's an imitable. It's a user and no reference um, property. Reference properties when it get value from some other property. <clears throat> All right, um, so let's create a property if it's missing, right? So we will say that the hero cube um, property create, did I make it correct? Property create. Okay, let's store the script. Uh, will be script magnetic uh, dynamics two. And in the arguments, we need these arguments. We need uh, first of all to call it and the name of this our uh, property will be uh, previous pose and then we need to pass that type vector 3 name animatable user property none so all these other uh, things we need to pass it here <clears throat> and that should create a new property so we say property is this one and once it's created uh, we could assign uh, property data into uh, previous uh, what value we should define the current pose right uh, data will be current pose so once if we just created that all right so if the property exists we need to assign the value of this pre prevent pose um, uh, property into some variable so that means we need to declare a new variable 
which we can call uh, previous pose. And we need just to assign the value uh, from, from this previous pose. Um, so that will be previous pose is prop data. Yeah. So that's what we need. All right. Um, so now we have these values. That's all good. What else we need to do? Um, we know the pose, we need the previous pose. So how we will impact? We need to have this acceleration that we talk about, right? So let's compute acceleration. Uh, main target, our main target. And the acceleration will be Acceleration in our case will be the um, subtraction from the current pose and previous pose. For subtraction, we have a helper method, which is a V sub, I think. Yes, this one. But the problem that if V sub is actually required to have, so let's go back to SDK, because this is what we can reference. Um, yeah, we have this of B sub, but we see that the T vector is actually vector 4D and I have my variable stored as the vector 3D. So that means the easiest way right now probably will be to have a quick new method. We can call it vector sub A and B and the result of this vector is it return fb vector 3d and we just subtract every component component x y and z and we return a new vector and in that case acceleration will be vector subtract the current pose and previous pose so that's what we will subtract and we will have the acceleration so now with this acceleration we want to impact our cubes but for that we also need to find our cubes so let's think what next steps we could do we need to find cubes in the scene um we need to run simulation so how to find cubes we know that it's the 100 cubes we have in the scene so we need to allocate maybe some list and the quick way for allocate list with the models will be to have specific call uh, count because that will be pre-allocated list and we not need to spend memory on appending every element. So this is much quicker. For every cube, we also will need a position of every cube because that's uh, to determine that our main target, how it will impact the velocity, right? We, know, we need to know the current position on every cube. And we also need to know the current velocity. So if it's a zero of the cube already had some previous uh, velocity and we should also do a simulation step. So we need from every cube the position and velocity. So that's why I'm allocating one more list of, in this case will be vector 3D, um, which is 100 of the positions uh, for cubes and we also need velocity of 100 velocities. Yes. <clears throat> so then in our range, right? What is the, the first index? The first index actually not a zero, it's one. So if I convert index into the name to find the cube, 
I need probably to have in range 1, 100. So it's not actually 100. Yeah, we will see if this 100, if it's a count or the last index. I a little bit forgot that thing, but if we will figure out. All right, so for let's try to locate all our cubes so that our cube will be fine model by label name and we know that label is cube uh, plus our index so this is our cube so now we also need to query the global position of the cube which will be some vector 3d or maybe not a vector 3d but what we can query is that the cubes uh, ith index get vector and store it into the cubes pose because these values are already pre allocated, so we could uh, it have to be pre allocated vector 3D. So we store the value into the cubes pose, yes, and then we also need to find the velocity <coughs> for our cubes property list a similar way we find. And then we find and looking for the current velocity of the cube. So if prop is none, that basically means that we need to create a new one and we can copy because it have to be the same vector 3D property type. So we assign it in a similar way, uh, but not from the hero cube. We need to from our cube i a property create with the name of velocity but the same type of vector and the table user no reference yes and then we say that the property data like a default value will be a v vector 3d 0 0 0 that will be our default value so now in our cubes velocity uh, we assign value from the prop data because in that case we already have um, this property if even if it's uh, none so not found we create a new one and we have default zero velocity so cube is not moving at this particular moment all right so this step is ready. We have 100 cubes. We have the current velocity. It's everything is ready to do the simulation, right? So simulation is interesting thing. So the simulation, it have to be something like we go to similar every cube. And what we do in simulation, we need to do some simulation step for Q and assign a new uh, cube translation and assign a new velocity. So let's imagine what will be our simulation step. Simulation step supposed to be for uh, for the for the cube model, right? So it have to be, I'm not sure if we need access. We already have position. So we already query the position. So we can pass as the argument, the position and velocity, the current one. So that's something that we store in, in this list. Position and velocity. We need also a delta time for simulation. It's very important in case we change it, uh, the simulation rate, we need a delta time. Maybe we want to do sub steps. Um, yeah, and also for the simulation step, we need the um, information from our hero cube, uh, which also we store as the position of the hero cube to know the magnetic influence. And uh, we also need the acceleration to uh, to have some impact on the current velocity, right? So this is our uh, things that we have. All right, um, so first of all, what we will do here is 
we should know what is our difference between the position like it um, what is our magnitude uh, so our difference will be the hero pose minus current q pose and that will be our difference so from this difference we could compute the um, the radius which will be uh, there is the method called length but also this method is designed so it's internal uh, motion builder mathematics method but it's also designed for the vector for d so i'm not going to make a new one which is also could be like easy way but i think the, this kind of mathematics uh, is better to have like c plus plus exposed and less python exposed yeah so ideally some simulations would be nice to have as the python extension so you make a plugin with some python extension you import this module and then you call these methods to do your simulation that will be the quickest way but once you prototyping you can do all the prototyping in python but then after you're ready with your simulation if you want to have it production ready very stable and performant you can wrap everything into c++ code <clears throat> as the next step so a vector for d will be from our diff uh, that we have uh, x y and z elements of a vector and the w element will be zero that will be our radius so if our radius is greater than some value so i want to have some impact and also if uh, the radius is less than let's say 100 so if the cube is too far to have no impact so in that case we need to compute the acceleration impact on our cube right and acceleration impact um uh, so i experiment a little bit i have some notes about that so let's experiment for some uh simple formula for this impact and uh, i think that first of all we need to normalize our uh, diff value diff vectors to have a direction so to normalize we can we need to multiply we don't have for vector 3d so let's make a multiply vector mult a with some uh, scalar value so we return vector 3d which is going to be um yeah basically maybe return a new vector like returning a new vector is also not the best uh scenario here because you imagine you are emul emulating 30 frames per second for every cube of 100 and you create an, a new variable so you always initiate a new memory and yeah so this is not the best scenario as usual it could be more performant if you call on existing variable and just to change values or channels like values of this variable that will be more performance but let's imagine we making a prototype for now uh, so every component will be multiplied by my uh, scalar value f <clears throat> and that will help us to normalize the diff so to normalize we need to multiply our vector by by the lens and our lens is r basically what we call here and then our acceleration which we need to see like by default acceleration will be zero vector 3d so if the cube is too close or cube is too far there will be no acceleration impact on that but otherwise our acceleration will be vector uh, multiplication with the direction and then this 100 distance uh, divide by the square of the lens so that's a very simple formula you can actually search for some uh, physics simulation uh, formulas around the net uh, yeah or use some books for that i mean i will not stop on exact like uh, talking about this uh, meaning of this physics formula um, we could do a lot of cool stuff here but i will continue with this simple thing 
just for this experiment. So when we have this acceleration, what I want to do with this acceleration, I want to um, damp uh, damp the acceleration so we, so that if the cube is far uh, from uh, from my influencer, so it will slow down the effect of this acceleration. So I would like additional to have some um, multiplication of this acceleration by 0 five. So it's like divide by two. And then I also would like to add a force to fall down. So we need a gravity force for this acceleration. So in that case, we need an additional uh, method for vector 3D, which I will call vector add. And I need this to add one vector to another. So for this acceleration, I'm going to vector add. Um, what will be this acceleration? FB vector 3D power impact like this maybe. And then we need to now iterate with a simple Euler uh, simulation. We need to iterate on our velocity that we have on our model. So the velocity will be vector add current velocity and then multiply acceleration by delta time. So then we iterate on the velocity and the same for the current position. So the velocity uh, has an impact on the position. So let's do it but a similar way and we say velocity multiplied by delta time and we add these two positions so we iterate and as we have this impact from the uh, from the ground uh, from the gravity uh, we can imagine that our cube will fall down forever so we need to have a very simple condition that if the pose of this cube is less than zero so let's make this pose as a zero so not fall down too far and also if we have this accumulated velocity that push our objects down we need to uh, this y component of velocity also make a zero um, so that they will not accumulate the velocity to get the crazy values and make it super unstable. <clears throat> and I think all other components like X and Z, we could emulate kind of friction on the ground so that it will not make this ground movement as it was in the air. Um, so if it's touching the ground, let's make other uh, components impact, big impact on the friction. So we'll have velocity, one and two will be multiplied by 0 0.1 so divided by 10 basically as we recomputed in this simulation step we computed the uh, position and velocity let's return a new values here at the tuple uh, position and velocity and this is our call on this step so we go for every cube we receive a new position and new velocity from the call that we have simulation step. Is it correct name? Simulation step. And we call there that current pose is, is our hero cube pose. Then we have the computed acceleration. Then we have cubes pose for every cube cubes velocity for every cube and then we have delta time that's it and then uh, we need to assign values back so we have that our cubes um, translation or we could say the set vector we don't have parent at the moment okay let it be translation but actually to be aligned with other calls it could be like as I called get vector to have the global position translation 
it could be set back to to set the global position translation for the cube whatever parent it has and then also in the uh, property list find velocity we need to assign the data to our new computed velocity so we will reuse it on next iteration so as you can see there is a lot of unoptimized things here like for example i always looking for the property i'm doing this search across the property list um yeah i'm not reusing a vector and creating some new vectors but even all that as usual it's fine for for the current performance it will not impact it too much but there is a big things uh, big set of things that we can optimize to make it run better okay this is our script of simulation so first of all what i can do here is to try it out here and run the script and to see what syntax error and all the things i have and i definitely have on line 76 i missed something here okay and then there is also something missing in the line 65 where i call probably get the vector in our pose okay so maybe I need to assign something like make a new vector, then get into this variable and for my cubes pose, uh, I need to assign this value, let's see. Okay, what next is line 79. Okay, so that's how many actually things I have around. <clears throat> And 79 is, uh, didn't match something, something, cubes translation. But the cubes is model. That's basically, have to be correct. Unit from the vector 3D and two flat values translation. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Ah, no, it's a 24. It's something in this simulation, 24. Uh, so the vector multiplication is, okay. It's this one. Uh, yeah three components okay now i made the simulation call and now i see that the cubes they are moving closer to that and then i have the simulation and this cube is 100 so probably when i do this iteration for uh 100 uh this is the um, something that I have to tweak for the end index. So if I run the simulation again, it will be out of scope. So there will be no cube like this. No, then it's a correct. Let me, it looks like, but why it's 100 is not evaluated. Do we have velocity here? No, I don't have velocity. Uh, but this 100 is not signed um that's interesting so we have every cube up to 100 so let's uh print i just forgot how it have to be in Python. so it's a 99 this is correct um okay i think what is missing here is that we're getting uh, access to all these arrays, all these lists, and they basically initialize to the lens 100 starting from zero, while I'm getting access starting from one. So to make it work properly, I need to change the number of elements in this list to 101, and then it should work and get impact of this element. Yeah. So now this logic, we could pass into our device and we're getting closer to be 
uh, having running script device. So what will be our next step right now? <clears throat> the next step, by the way, if we select every cube, we'll see that there was a current accumulated velocity value. So uh, we need a relation constraint because we need to trigger our device somehow. And relation constraint can do this with a pools node. So we also need to have some cube to be to trigger relation constraint like it couldn't uh, evaluate empty code and device is not something that they can pull the the evaluation of the relation constraint that's why we need to have some kind of the cube here and probably some maybe custom property if we create a new one and we create some maybe number which will be it could be just a number and make it an annotable. So we need to assign something to a cube so that the relation constraint will be in the queue for, for evaluation thread. And we also need this, um, um, uh, where it was not the system, it was a source. We need the pools, this one. Um, so that 30 frames per second, we will trigger our device. Oops, it's 30 frames per second. And I don't need play mode for now. And we will see that if we put it into the number, you will see that we push it now with a zero and one. But that's what we're gonna do for our device and also as the receiver and assign it into the action trigger. And here we go. We have now this simulation running. So we can move our cube and all other cubes are updating simulation in every frame. So if the cube are too far, like here, they will just fall down with the gravity and low down the velocity and have no impact anymore. The otherwise we can collect them as the magnetic uh, simple simulation driven by our hero cube. And that's it probably. So what we can see here, if we go to profile and center, we see that we have tons of evaluation rate here. So it's not impacting our evaluation at all. This, uh, there is zero percent uh, for this uh, thread. The render as well is doing well. So the idle, I have 30% on idle, but imagine it's not a small script. We're almost running like a simulation for 100. We can do it with the thousands. And if we optimize it in a better, better way, it will still, uh, you will be able to run all this stuff quite easily without having any big impact. And no initialization needed in that case because you directly impact the um, transformation of the cube. So there is no animation nodes created for this purpose. And yes, it will be uh, an issue like, um, Cons for that is that not easy to plot this simulation. You need some additional walk around and not easy to render. In case of render, you can use post-process uh, plugin, which will trigger the all existing devices, uh, script devices in the frame. It will trigger it every render frame so you can render your simulation. Um, yeah. That's it for now and hope that that will be insightful and helpful video for you. I was trying to make it in the forum because quite often I'm recording these videos as the quick preview and not showing actually details on how I'm creating some stuff. So this particular time I was thinking to make something uh, really in steps on how I'm creating it uh, from scratch. It's not quite easy always to record it like this uh, or maybe start uh, a stream to show everything from details and answer questions. But please write in comments if you would like to see something like this and especially if you would like to see it as the stream format. Um, yeah, and have a good day. See you in next videos. Bye.